How to identify fonts from an image. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I identify fonts from images, um, primarily for the, the purpose of recreating them as vector graphics. I will receive a raster file like what you see in front of you, and my client wants me to convert it into a vector format, hence my vector made business. Um, so when I do this, uh, there are like three places that I like to go to. And I've noticed that some of the places out there that are, have other tutorials on this kind of rank things. And I don't really see them as ranked. I see these as uh, they're hit or miss. So you use all three because one time this one might be work great. Another time it'll be in the other one. And sometimes those two will fail and you got to go to a third place. Um, and all of them are valuable. Um, and I would keep all three in your, in your toolkit when you're trying to identify fonts. So let's kind of jump in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's, I've got three examples. First, we'll use this Felsberg, Holt, and uh, Ulevig, if I'm even saying that correctly. I don't know. But uh, we'll go to the first place, which is fontsquirrel.com. Um, you would click on this font identifier up here on their navigation. I'll upload and I'll try and find that. Uh, where was that FHU logo? There we go. And what you can do is um, you'll have to, it'll automatically kind of like grab all the shapes that are in there, including all this stuff, which is annoying, but you know, it doesn't help. So you have to come in and help um, by creating a box around the letters. And usually I try to kind of get the biggest letters or just one line of text. You can also try getting all the text because there are other letters here. You know, there's an H here, a T there, all that. But there are quite a few um, repeat letters, so I don't need everything in here. Um, so probably for this one, I would just go Felsberg. You've got a fairly pronounced R that has a, a specific shape. The S is very skinny, the G. Um, there's always uh, certain letters have more um, opportunity to be different than, than others. Um, A's can be very different, for instance. Whereas like T's tend to all look roughly the same within a, a serif font, you know, um, only if you get into a sans serif will those look very different, but you kind of get a feel for that, which of these letters is going to be more important than others. But anyway, uh, you can always play with that later. Uh, maturate it is what you're going to click next. It will automatically have these three distributors checked with uh, my fonts is another option. Um, what's interesting about this is if you click this, it will change what's shown here. And sometimes it's just weird. Like it won't actually show more. It'll show less, which makes no sense to me. But hey, just know that that's a, a thing. So here's uh, what it's showing. It's like human is 521 regular as the first result. Hey, that's pretty close. But I already noticed that the R is not quite right. It's a little bit thicker up here and it's a thinner R up here. Um, but everything else is pretty close. It's it's in line with this uh, font. So maybe in the in a pinch you could use that. Uh, font Squirrel will show you where um, these things are located. So like this is thirty bucks on Font Spring. Um, Petita Bold Regular is free on Font Zillion, and that's pretty close as well. Honestly, it looks about the same as Humanist. So you could maybe use that one. A slightly different S here. Um, and then you can kind of scroll through these, see if there are any others that that are accurate. And it, it gets less accurate as you go, typically. I mean, you've got this one, which is just not even close. And if there are like multiple pages, they'd be here, but there, there aren't for this one. I'm going to see what happens if we click my fonts as well and just add that in. Did it change anything? Well, you got a few extras in here, but they don't show you the previews of those fonts either. So that's always a negative with this site is that you're only going to get the previews from these three places, my fonts that won't import previews, but it's basically the same, uh, set of stuff. You just get a few different ones and some that were in there that are not now in there. So just know that this kind of messes with your options and sometimes I click it and sometimes I don't, there's not a tried and true method to this. The second place that I like to use is my fonts and you just go over here to what the font you can also download their mobile if you want to use that. The form, I believe, is no longer operative. It looks like maybe 
I don't know, 29 weeks ago or so was the last time they did anything with that. I don't think that this works anymore. Uh, I used to use it all the time, was a, was a great tool, but they don't get back to you. There's nobody there. It's all AI driven now, I believe. So uh, here's the uh, place where you upload into what the font. Let's do that FHU. I'll just do the top line of text since that's what I did on Font Squirrel. You always have to readjust these to make sure they don't cut off any of the letters and hit identify font. And the first thing it shows you is Gil Sands, which is what it is. That is the font. And I already recognized this one, so I already uh, didn't have to identify anything. I just typed in Gil Sands. So this is where you would buy it for $92.99. Yeah, right. You know you're not going to do that. I know you're not going to do that. Um, you, you know, you're not even going to buy this half price one here. What you're going to do is just type in Gil Sands Medium or Gil Sands MT Free. And you'll do that in a Google search and probably find it somewhere. Most fonts can be found for free somewhere. Um, I always use that because you're just recreating what somebody else is doing. And so, you know, I don't want to like have to pay for a font that they've already used on their branding. Um, that's just ridiculous. Now, if you're going to start using things for commercial purpose on your own, yes, make sure you've got a proper license on your fonts and all that. But if you're just recreating somebody else's artwork and you want to get a freebie out there, I think that's smart. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Let's look at the kind of reverse turn or turning the corner. Uh, this one, I believe I took this one into both of these as well. Let's see. I think I did. I think, I think this one was the one that didn't work. Let's just upload that real quick. Where is that? Turn the corner PNG. Boom. I hope I did the PNG. I may have done a, a different one. Let's see. Identify font. What do you say it is? Says so it's Soho Gothic, which it clearly is not. So, uh, that's not, there's a little bit of a curve in the end. The R is a little bit different. So as you look through, you'll see none of these really works. Yeah. And there'll probably be multiple pages. I have found that if it's not in the first few results, it's probably not on the page. So don't even worry about going to other pages. You're probably not going to find it if it's not on the first page. Most of the time. Um, I'm curious what this will get. Let's see. Again, let's go to turn the corner and just get this turn and see if Font Squirrel can get it. And Font Squirrel says it's Ubuntu Medium and it's, our, it's a free font from Font Squirrel. So I went here and I downloaded that and I was able to just type that in for free. The whole logo was in that and so that saved me a ton of time. Now, other than having to do this little custom G down here, but super easy, right? So uh, another example was this arc, and I'm going to just show you what those do. Again, if we come to this one here, click on this, where's the arc logo? What did I do for arc? Was it this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I just did the top three letters here, hit match rate. Didn't even show me anything rounded. Look, all this stuff is like, Sharp edges, sharp edges, the whole thing. I think if you click my fonts and match rate it, it really doesn't change much. Yeah. Now at least you got Volte rounded semi bold here, but I'd have to look to see, you know, is that a is that a good ma match or not? I don't know. I couldn't tell. And um, it's not. I I've actually checked it, but I just wanted you to know that that's an option. Uh, let's see what it does here on myfonts.com. At least it gave you a rounded one, right? Puck Medium is much closer than the ones that Font Squirrel gave. And all of these top results are rounded. So that's a, an improvement. But again, there's not a tried and true way of doing this. Sometimes my fonts is better and sometimes it's the other one. But look here, this isn't even close. The A is not even close. Why did this even come up? I don't know. That's just how they, they work. So uh, I can tell you that there were no good results on either of these. So what I ended up doing was going to my third favorite place, which is defont.com. Now you can get a whole lot of uh, fonts here, and most of them are crap, as you can see. They're, they're junky fonts, but I, I do have a few that I've used off of this site, but not a ton. Um, but what I do love defont for is the forum and font identification. This has replaced the what the font forum for me, and they're way more responsive than what the font ever was. Uh, so you hit new topic. You'd uh, go find your whatever it was, ARC, let's do that one, ARC, 
I put that here under the um, subject. And then if you need a message like, hey, don't worry about the tagline, or I need the tagline and the logo font as well, um, you would put something like that there just so that the people looking at it know. Always click notify me of replies via email. You'll have to sign up for a free account to do this, by the way. I already have one. Then you would hit submit. And then usually within the next 24 hours, you'll have a response. Not always. Sometimes sometimes they never get back to you. Um, because sometimes maybe, the, maybe it's not a font. Maybe it's a custom font that doesn't actually exist out there as like a true type file or an open type file. Um, or maybe it's just really hard to identify. Uh, one of the problems with thefont.com is if your image is not good enough, they will kind of automatically cancel your request. And I've had that happen so many times. So one trick I like to use whenever I have really crappy files, but I still really need to have that, uh, that font identified is I will use this thing called Gigapixel. And I'll just open it real quick. I have another video on that it's a, few video, a few videos back, but it's Gigapixel AI. You can bring in stuff. Let's just bring in one real quick. Let's see. I'll bring in this one real quick and just show you. And if I just do the speed settings on it, see what it looks like. So ARC, boom, right there. It cleans it up immediately. And you can mess with settings to like improve on that even some more. I'll even kind of show you what this part looks like here. So that's kind of what it does. That's not a great example because it didn't quite clean it up well enough for me. I'm going to do like a higher uh, end recovery setting just to see what that does. But I'm just giving you an example of like sometimes if defont.com, your last resource is there, you're going there to try to identify the font and the quality of your image is not good enough that they will actually take time to look at it. Look at that. You can come in here, run recovery mode on just a section of this save that and then upload that into Defont Forum and they will usually accept that one. And then you can actually maybe get a good result for what you need. They did get back with me on this. It's Nunito Sands. I may have already mentioned that, but yeah, they did a good job. So anyway, that those are the three places I like to use. Uh, Font Squirrel, My Fonts, and Defont.com for various purposes. And again, I can't say one is better than the other because I sometimes one will be great one time and not so great the next time and uh, vice versa. So, um, but let me know what you think about that. Let me know if there are any, any other places that you guys like to go to get uh, font identification. Um, and uh, like and subscribe and leave comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video.